Well, family, this is an awesome, awesome, awesome time. We celebrate the Lord Jesus Christ and who he is and all that he's made available. Praise God through his shed blood and through his life and, and surrendering his life. Thank you so much, man. Gracias, gracias. Awesome. Um, let me, you guys close your eyes. I got this. Got to get a little, bit, a little back to the board. Praise God. A little closer to the board. Praise God. Well, again, praise God. We greet uh, all of our friends and family. Greet you in Jesus' name. And all who are connected and watching uh, on Facebook and wherever you are in the world, uh, we just salute you and honor you in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, let us pray. Father, we just thank you for this time and this moment to, to Lord, to investigate your word and to, Lord God, to focus on your heart. Thank you for your guidance. Thank you for your insight and counsel. Thank you for the things that you desire to say and release, God, today. Thank you, Father, for the anointing, the help of the Holy Spirit, the Word of God, the illumination that you would bring, the understanding that you would bring, God, as you take our minds and hearts, God, over into your world and your realm, as you take us deeper into the reality of the kingdom, God. We just thank you for the establishing of truth in the hearts of your people. And I just decree, Father, that every eye, God, will see what you desire to reveal. Every ear will hear. And in every heart, God, will be received with meekness, God, the engrafted word which is able to save our soul. And I shut down all satanic and demonic interference that will seek to disrupt the entry of your word. I decree there will be no wonder in mind, no thoughts, no distractions, God. Father, anything, that high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of you, we cast down in advance in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Father, that Jesus Christ will be seen and will be glorified. We thank you, Father. We decree that we're concealed. And, Father, that this is a sacred moment. We give you honor and praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Um, the foundation and the heart of what I wanted to share was do a recap about uh, the graduation. There are a few points. Uh, we had an awesome time this previous weekend. Uh, to uh, those who may not know, uh, we had our prophetic equipping class as well as our leadership development class uh, graduate uh, the actual uh, curriculums that they were going through. One was 70 weeks, the other one was I think 74 classes. And so uh, we had a three day getaway, mm -hmm. praise God. Yeah. Three day getaway yeah. in God's presence, praise God. The graduation ceremony was, was only uh, the actual ceremony was a small portion. It was about two hours on Saturday. But there was so much more beyond that that God did. And I believe that even that was twofold, praise God, in our midst. Um, I do want to uh, recap just on some awesome things that God did. And then we're going to teach uh, from that moment to really understand some of the things that God did. Yes. Praise God. Um, the first uh, witness that we experienced was just amazing love, amazing unity. Uh, the spirit of servitude was in the house. Uh, everyone willing to help, you know, with, you know, words, hearts, hands, effort, labor, whether it was physical labor, whether it was support, whether it was being on standby. Uh, there was just so much love and assistance. People who were not previously assigned uh, got in and found their place, and, and it was just an awesome, awesome time of love. On that Friday, we actually did a meet and greet, praise God. And during that time, uh, we had a lot of people still coming in from different places, some from uh, Oklahoma, uh, California, Minnesota, some locally, uh, but a lot of different places. So, you know, when we all got in, uh, I believe what set the tone for everything was the honoring God and the prayer. Yes. Praise God. Uh, apart from programs and things that we put together, uh, I think... Uh, David said, except the Lord build a house, they labor in vain that build it. Which means that he has to be the beginning or he's not going to be in it. Yeah. Praise God at all. Yeah. Praise God. He has to be the, he's the alpha. That means the beginning. And so every true God work has to start with acknowledging, honoring the Lord Jesus Christ and having a sinner in him. Praise God. And so despite of how dynamic and busy and we had programs, we had our, the things, our schedule, praise God. The first thing that we want to do is humble ourselves and say, Our Father, who art in heaven, praise God, and come together so that the presence of God uh, can show up and so that God can be glorified and that man can be ministered to us. So as we did that and circled around, it was like heaven on earth, yeah. uh, the spontaneous worship, 
uh, to praise, to rejoice in the sound of heaven. Uh, even uh, when I on 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 uh, actually I think it was Monday in leaving uh, Billy, uh, who was on site. He there that that's the couple that they stay there. And one of the things that he said to me was that he really enjoyed uh, that time of prayer. When he, I think he must have been looking out the window, just kind of watching it. But he said he really enjoyed uh, watching us and engage in prayer in that time of prayer. And so that uh, that was an indicator to me that that whole moment was unique to him and special, uh, as well as that time of worship. So a uh, great moment and great encounters, uh, healings and and uh, deliverances and miracles and prophetic words and activations. People went on to different places and uh, prophecies were not just words, but you know the words that were spoken were confirmed and actually activated things in people and they're still operating in their lives even today uh, as they just indulge in. And of course that Sunday night, praise God, which we'll call that lucky seven, praise God, seven hours of prophetic ministry, praise God. That Sunday lucky night was seven. a time. <laughs> seven hours. That seven, that Sunday night was a time like none of it, praise God. And it was just great to see uh, all of the testimonies, all of the impact. And to those of you who, which is just about all of you, who don't remember your prophetic word unless you were recorded with a phone. Praise God. And you preach like, it just felt so good. And I know God touched me, but I don't remember nothing he said. You know? <laughs> so we anticipated that. Praise God. So Jason uh, is going to be working on the compilation. He's editing and uh, the weekend for us. And he'll be sending uh, all footage, all that he was able to record in relation to our testimony. So we'll get that information to you as well. Praise God. But an awesome time, and I believe uh, above everything, God showed us that in the midst of everything that was going on, that there are things more noble to live for. There's, you know, there, there are great moments that you can create when Christ is the center. Praise yeah. God. And, and it brought so much healing, so much life and restoration. Yeah. Yeah. And listen, and I'm going to say this because it's a beauty. In a time where the nation is divided Come by on. race and culture, yeah. praise God, and and, and by ethnic ethnicity, pray God. Yeah. It was a beautiful show of what where God's heart yeah. really is for his church yeah. and his body. Yeah. Praise God and what heaven looks like. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And so I, I believe that that aspect of the love of God that transcended uh, time, space, demographics, uh, ethnicity, and coming together to honor Christ is what caused the heavens to open yeah. for us to encounter what we encounter. So we give God a praise. Yeah. Let's give God a hand for all that he did. Glory to God. Well, I want to share uh, just uh, three points from that weekend. I'm going to be sharing and teaching uh, about uh, the, the operations of the Holy Spirit that weekend. Three points. There are a lot of things that God did, and of course there are more than three, but there were three that got highlighted to me that he wants us to really understand. Uh, as it relates to the Holy Spirit. One of the greatest ways to build confidence in the supernatural ministry that God has given you is to gain understanding on how God operates. I was listening to my mom, and I thought it was so profound because I was meditating on this earlier today. She said that before she came, she was meditating on the scripture that she was going to use for speak out. Yeah. Okay, And that is a great, 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 great discipline because... Uh, the, the, the strength of your position, your ability to hold on to the promise in the midst of time, tribulation, or attack and resistance is going to deal with your depth of understanding and that truth or that revelation that you have embraced. Okay? It's almost like a plant. Okay? If the plant is barely rooted, if the roots have not sunk deep in the earth, it's easy to be plucked up, mm -hmm. you know, when the rain, when the wind comes, praise God. But if you go deeper, the deeper you go, the deeper you plant yourself, the deeper you're established, praise God, then the harder it is when those things come to be uprooted, okay? And that is why, and please hear this, this is why in Christianity, you have to do Christianity <laughs> backwards. And what I mean by that, uh, most people, f if, if we can't break, if if we're subject to the fear of man, 
And she was praying this early when it comes to appearance. You know, there's sometimes there's a temptation to to appear what it's not to be. And we and and a person can invest on more so the show of instead of just taking the time to become. With a seed, it takes root downward, the prophet said, and it bears fruit upward. And that's what I mean by doing Christianity backwards. Okay. It the, the first necessary stage of operation takes place out of the naked eye of the public. And that is in our devotional life and our secret life. Okay. And so there comes a time that you have to be okay with no one seeing you. No one knowing what's going on between you and God. And you have to learn how to invest down. Okay. Down. Down. Jesus had to go down into the heart of the earth for how many days? Three, Three days. There's a see the, the, the first process of life is down. Amen. Out of the public eye. You know. Nobody sees. Nobody knows. There's no attention for me. There's no platform. There's no applause. Now. I go down. I go to the secret place. And I'm planning. I'm going down and I'm growing. See, and people who focus on going up or being out and being known and being seen before they go down, mm -hmm. they're easily uprooted when the storm comes because there's a process, there's a proper order to all true growth. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, except the corn and wheat fall into the ground and die, mm -hmm. okay, it abides alone. Mm -hmm. But if it dies, it brings forth much fruit. Mm -hmm. And see, everything that takes place up under the ground can't be seen. Mm -hmm. You just gotta wait for it. Yeah. Okay? And and that's how we're to order, you know, really our life. I don't really going that way, but uh, anyway, <laughs> let's move on back over here. Praise God. So when it comes to what God is doing, diversities of operations is what I want to talk about, the operations of that weekend. Uh, First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 6. I want you to look at this. And I'm going to read a translation for you. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 6. That was the heart of it. Praise God. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 6. She's going to pull it up. This is Paul talking to the church of Korea. Okay. As a matter of fact, can you go to verse number 4 just to get it in context? Thank you, thank you. Now he says there are diversities of gifts. I want you to see because you're going to see the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in this. And this is why we call it the gifts of the what? Spirit. Because it is the Holy Spirit who is in control of the giftings. Okay? There are divers diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. Okay? Now, gifts of the Spirit. Verse 5. There are differences of administrations. Administrations will be the offices, or functions, or what we will call callings. Okay? Uh, there are differences of administrations. But the same with Lord. now that's Jesus. Okay? That's Jesus. If you shall believe in your heart, the Lord Jesus, and confess with your mouth that God is raising from the dead, you shall be what? Amen. So when you think about the gifts of the Spirit, you have to have a, a firm relationship with the Holy Spirit. When it comes to your calling and identity, mm -hmm. whoever you are, you are in who? Christ Jesus. Okay, if any man be in, he's the source of every God-given identity, calling, administration, you know, whoever and whatever you're called to be, whether apostle, prophet, pastor, evangelist, or teachers of administrations, they all differ. Everyone has an identity. Everyone has an administration in him. Praise God. They may not all be fivefold, but you have an identity mm -hmm. on the inside of him. And that identity is in who? It's in Christ, Christ. Jesus. Okay? So when, I, when, I'm, when I'm pressing to see who I am, and Lord, who am I? You know, who have you created me to be? You know, you know I, then that is going to be uh, in connection with the Son. You're going to see who you are in the Son. Praise God as a reflection. And so there has to be some intimacy, some drawing near to him in order for that mystery to be revealed. Now let's go on to verse 6. This is what I want to get to. Now this is the Father. He said that there are diversities of what? Operations. operations. 
but it is the same God which worketh all and in all. Now I want to talk about operations, operations, because one of the greatest things that can help equip us to have the confidence to do what God has created us to do is to understand operations of the kingdom, operations of the spirit. Uh, the YLT translation of 1 Corinthians 12, 6 reads like this. And there are diversities of workings. Say that with me, workings. Yes. So operations, another word for operations, are workings. Okay? So when we talk about operations, we are, we're, we're, we're seeking to understand not just what's been done, but how things what? Work. work. Yeah, how things work. Okay. And your confidence to do anything that you have been given the administration of a calling to do, your confidence or lack of confidence is all tied around your knowledge of how things work or your ignorance of how things work. Mm -hmm. No one has confidence to do what they don't understand how to do. Mm -hmm. Okay? And, and it's no different in the kingdom. It's no different when it comes to ministry. It's no different when it comes to our calling. You know, when we get understanding of how things work in the spirit, praise God, it makes things easier. It makes it easier for us to flow and to operate in him, praise God, and to partner with him. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're going to talk about this. And there are diversities of operations or workings. This is what I want to say, and this may blow your mind. The heart of, of what's being communicated in principle is that there are many ways, said it would be many ways. many ways, there are diverse ways that God can can get the same thing done. Mm -hmm. Okay, God, can, God is not limited to one way. Mm -hmm. You see this word right here. He said, uh, and it is the same God who worketh all in all. First Corinthians chapter 6, operations is plural. Workings are plural, mm -hmm. which means that he doesn't just work one way. Mm -hmm. He works in many ways. Mm -hmm. Okay? So the first thing that we have to do, we have to humble ourselves and admit that there are some things about how God operates that I may not be knowledgeable of. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because if I don't embrace that in the beginning, then operations that are beyond my mental scope will become offensive. Mm -hmm. Praise God to me. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. And so this is why I say that the, the, when you deal with the school of higher learning, which is the school of the spirit, and learning and understanding the deep things of God, the, the, the primary place of positioning yourself to understand and hear to perceive is in humility. You have to already come expecting to be reprogrammed in your mind about the things of God. You, can, you can't approach the higher realities with preconceived notions. Even in the things that you feel you do know. You remember I always say this. Keep both ends open to knowledge. Okay. Keep both ends open to revelation. Anybody remember why? You, it, that's one. Anything that you get from God is partial. It's in part. Okay. You want to keep both ends open. You want to. Because when revelation comes. You, you want to allow room for God to remove something in your understanding that is not as accurate as you may have perceived yes. and you want to keep the other end open for him to add greater insight to it mm -hmm. to make it more complete okay you never have all that there is mm -hmm. we never have all that there is Paul said we know in part and we prophesy in part mm -hmm. and so you have to be open for your revelation and your understanding mm -hmm. to be perfected to be fine tuned by removing and adding praise God and he, he removes from some things and he adds to some things to make the weight of what he's given you more effective and more complete. But it takes humility to take that stance. Part of the wars and part of the visions is that people have taken parts and have thought it was the whole. And it went to war with everybody and created great, great, great problems in the church. This is why denominational splits and, and all this other stuff has arisen. It's because of the parts and the pieces that we get 
uh, that people are saying, this is the whole, this is all that there is, this is the only way God can do these things, and this is how things work. Because this is my testimony, yeah. this is how God does things, yeah. praise God. Not realizing that God is a, a very big God, praise yeah. God. He is very manifold in his wisdom, diverse in his grace and in his work, is, and he can get the same thing done in many ways, okay? Yeah. And that is, that is probably the heart of what you need to understand when it comes to operations. And if, and if we can approach it with the heart and with the eye of a child, you can grow in so much wisdom, okay? Classic example, when it comes to salvation, say that with me, salvation. salvation. There's so much uh, fighting and doctrine over how to be saved and how to be born again, praise God. Now, now we know, and, and this may shock you, I, I may go through these scriptures and just show you, and I might just, I, I just tell them to you, I don't wanna go through all the scriptures, but do you know there were about, scripturally, there are about three different ways scripturally that men were born again. Mm -hmm. Okay, I just say two, one, they're, they're about three. First of all, we know that Jesus commanded them to baptize in the name of Jesus, mm -hmm. okay? Okay, for the remission of sins in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit in order for salvation. And then we have Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. We have Paul saying, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Now there are some that say, well, that's not sufficient. They say, well, that doesn't count because Peter said you have to be baptized. But God told Paul the apostle, praise God, this. And where they miss it at is that they have reduced the working of God to one way. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and instead of having a humility to understand that he can get the same thing done in diverse ways, praise God, we allow pride to rise up yeah. to make us think that we are smarter than the scripture. Yeah. Praise God. Paul, you're wrong. Right. You know, oh, it really, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and so rather than us Realigning and adjusting in the way that we think, people hold on to their limited perspective and it creates problems and division. I've seen man born again being baptized. I've seen man being born again of oh, Romans 10, 9, and 10. I've seen people have powerful encounters with the Holy Spirit that were life, life transforming. Okay, now check this out. Okay, now we have in Acts chapter 10, when Peter went to the house of Cornelius. We had people that, matter of fact, his household was born again and baptized in the Holy Ghost as Peter preached the word. Mm -hmm. And they didn't get into the water to Come after. Wow. Okay. In, at the end, he said, well, can any man forbid these to be baptized who have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? Yeah. And so God supernaturally saved them and baptized them in the Holy Ghost as preaching was going forward. Mm -hmm. Diverse working. Somebody said working. working. And so we see Romans 10, 9, and 10. We see Jesus giving the apostles the commission. And then there's a unique scripture in, in 1 Corinthians chapter number 2 that probably would offend a lot of people. Paul said that Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. Now imagine that. Mm -hmm. What he was saying is that, you know, I'm after souls, but the anointing and the commission on my life, the revelation that Jesus gave me to get people saved, was to have them confess with their mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in their heart, and they will be saved. Okay? When it came to the 12 apostles, praise God, that walked with him, they were given a different commission to go forth baptizing in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, praise God, for the remission of sins. Do you see that? Okay? The thing is that none of them are wrong. The Holy Spirit can move in any given way that God has ordained. Diverse workings. Mm -hmm. Different ways of operating. Okay? Now, I want to show you this real quick. And this, this probably would really sh shock you. Um, I want you to go to the book of John. And we're going to look at some people that were born, ag born again. Uh, matter of fact, in the book of John, I think it's chapter number 20. If I can get my iPad.
John 20, verse number 19. Let's start at 19. I want to show you how the, the apostles were born again. John 20, 19. Verse number... Here we go. It says, Then at the same... Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. This is after his resurrection. And when he had so said, he showed them his hands and his side. Then were his disciples glad when they saw the Lord. I want you to see this stuff. Then said Jesus unto them, Peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, even so I send you. Verse 22 is what you don't want to read too fast. Yeah. Verse 22 says, And when he had said this, he did what? Breathe, breathe on them. Yeah. He breathed on them. And said unto them, what? Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Whosoever sins you remit, they remit it. Whosoever sins you retain, you retain. Okay? Now, the reason that this has to be born again, that born again experience, is that Paul said, being born again by the washing, regeneration, and renewing of the Holy Ghost. When we're born again, it is the Holy Spirit that brings our inner man back to life in Christ. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Mm -hmm. And so what he was doing, breathing new life into them. He was, he, this was a born again experience. They were not baptized. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Wow. They were not, that was on Romans 10, 9 and 10. Nobody was preaching to them. They had a visitation from the Lord yeah. Jesus Christ after his crucifixion yeah. and resurrection. And he appeared unto them and... And they were born again. Somebody said that was working. Okay. That was working. That's what that is. They, they were born again. Who said ever since you return? What was the significance of this? Because it was the beginning of a new creation. You remember the first man, Adam, mm -hmm. was breathed into by who? God in his nostrils. And he came alive mm -hmm. as the first man, Adam. The last man, Adam, or the last Adam, which is Jesus Christ, yes. what he did, he did the same. What he was saying is that this is the beginning of a new race. Wow. This is the beginning of a new species of being. Wow. This is the beginning of a, of a supernatural existence of, of creatures that are born in my likeness and in my image. Amen. This is the new creation coming alive. And just as God the Father started humanity by breathing into the nostrils, Praise God. Of Adam, Jesus Christ started his generation and started his people by breathing life into them as well, making them just like him in likeness and in his image. Wow. Praise God. Isn't that important? Praise God. That's powerful. Praise God. God is an awesome, awesome, awesome God. And so when we look at this and we look at the fact that they were breathed into, praise God, uh, Paul was on the road to Damascus mm -hmm. with his encounter, praise God, and really got converted in a vision as Ananias led him by the hand. Yes. Cornelius' household, they were just listening to the word. With the 12 disciples, they baptized, and men were saved. With Paul, he preached the gospel, and men were born again, okay? And there are so many different ways that God used to bring man unto Christ Jesus. That are in the word of God. And this is what we want to listen. This is what you want to be open for. The workings of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Don't get stuck. Praise God. Always have the humility to see what is. And if it's not apparent. Say God teach me. Show me more. Open my eyes. Help me understand. I believe I know that there is more here. And more to this. Amen. Praise God. It's not saying that what you have is not enough, but sometimes we're in that Apollo situation. Praise God. And when it came to Apollos in the book of Acts, they saw him preaching the gospel, Priscilla and Aquila. Yeah. 
And he was preaching the gospel, but the Bible says that they came to him and showed him how to preach the gospel more excellently. In other words, he was lacking in his understanding somewhere, and they helped him add to it to increase his preaching. We can always be added to our understanding. That's what I'm saying. It doesn't mean that what we have is not good. It doesn't mean that what we have is not, is, is, is not true, but it's never all that there is. Praise God. And we have to have that ability. And if we can bear that in heart and mind, then we can grow in learning the operations of the Holy Spirit and not be offended by his workings. And this is how the religious spirit became so religious. And this is why they accused Jesus of casting out demons by the power of Beelzebub. Wow. This is why they, they came against him because he worked and operated with God in ways that they were unfamiliar yeah. with. He healed on the Sabbath. Yeah. He let his disciples go to the cornfield and eat corn on the Sabbath. His disciples weren't even fasting. They came they said, well, why not your disciples fasting? Yeah. He said, can the children of the bridegroom fast as long as he is present? Praise God. And so he totally revolutionized the way that they did, that, that they did the Judaic, you know, the, the Mosaic faith. Praise God. They were not familiar with those things. And it was offensive to them to humble themselves and learn more. But there was one man that was being pricked to the heart. Praise God. Master, we know that thou art a teacher that comes from God. Yeah. But no man can do these things that you do except God be with him. I call him Nick at night. Praise God. That's Nick at night. Praise God. Remember Nickelodeon? Praise God. He's had it. Nick at night. Nicodemus came to Jesus by night, the scripture said. Praise God. He was discreet. Praise God. And on the low. Praise God. I said, man, man. Praise God. But I wanted to share that with you to, to break ground. I'm just going to hit three points real quick about this weekend to establish the importance of operations. Praise God. Number one, this is what I want to talk about. Why did healings and miracles take place during the baptism? Okay. And this is what I want to pinpoint because there were people that were healed. There were, there were people that were delivered, uh, people that were set free. But don't you want to know why that happened yes. during that time? How does that happen? How and why? Okay. Why, does it why did it happen that time? Why did it happen the first time you were baptized? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Why does it? Why didn't it happen in, in some of the other places? But it, it happened there in that weekend at Zion. Okay. See, these are the things. That, these are the things that you can't be afraid to ask, because this is the understanding that's necessary for you to be who God has created you to be, and to do what God has come create call for you to do. It's time to come out of the shallow. Okay. Praise God. Questions are the way to wisdom. Praise God. Never be ashamed and afraid to ask because these are the things that we need to know and things that we, we really want to know. Okay, so the reason for the healings and miracles uh, during the baptism uh, had everything to do with honoring the death, the burial, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, one of the things that we did differently that sometimes people don't do is they don't teach the significance of the baptism, okay? And you may not have understood the importance, but the reason that this is so important is because all miracles, signs and wonders, healing, all of these things happen by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. But the Holy Spirit does not honor anything that doesn't bear witness to the Son, Amen. okay? He only speaks what he hears Jesus speak, and he only confirms the testimony of Jesus Christ. So whenever Jesus Christ is not the center, he's not the heart, he's not, he's, he's not the focus of things, then miracle signs and wonders become limited or absolute altogether. Wherever he is truly honored, he is truly lifted up. Wherever he is truly taught in reverence and focus and attention and faith is directed toward him, and the hearts of the people are hungry in expectation, then that gives the Holy Spirit a right to confirm his reality to us in his ministry by healings, deliverances, signs, and wonders. That's how it works. Okay. And this is why we have to be dead, because I always say, he's not going to look good, and we, and we look good at the same time. Somebody's got to take the back burner. Either we're going to exalt him, or we're going to be exalted. 
Okay? But if we exalt ourselves, it is at the expense of healing, deliverance, signs and wonders, God. and God manifesting his power. God. Praise God. And so what we did is that we put the focus and the emphasis on Jesus. We cracked the Bibles open, and we went to Romans chapter 6. Yes. And we began to teach about baptism, about being baptized in him. Now, you may not remember this, but I'll explain to you uh, what really happened. When we got to the part of about being immersed in Him, yes. mm -hmm. that is when everything shifted. Yes. Right? Yes. That is when the anointing, the presence yes. of God, the glory of God rested upon people. That is when people begin to weep mm -hmm. and the scales begin to fall off. That was the point of revelation. Yes. Yes. Praise God. That was a point of, uh, Jason said, do that illustration again. Yeah. So I said, do that. Do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> Praise God. And it was it it was a it was a it was a key, you guys. It, see, here's the thing: we think to be affected, we got to be new, yeah. or deep, or we have to have some far-fetched revelation. Right. Praise God! But but John said that you know I'm not preaching to you a new message. I'm preaching to you the same thing that you've heard from the beginning. Yes. You yes. know, the same thing that you have heard from the beginning. And this is why foundation class is so important because when we talk about foundation, we're not talking about things that are inferior or things that are shallow. We're talking about things that are first, vital, and necessary, mm -hmm. essential. Mm -hmm. Okay? So foundational is not basic by far. Foundation is, is what holds up the infrastructure of everything else that you build up on top of that. Yes. Right? So foundation is essential. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Praise It's the most important part. Praise God. It's important that we start out the right way and that we build effectively and we build the right way. Amen. And so when we look at this, you guys, I want you to go to Mark 16, verse number 12. As we talk on Romans chapter 6, I want to show you something in Mark 16, 12. This is, we're still talking about the operations of the Spirit and the Holy Spirit and of the Holy Ghost. It says, after that, I'll let you guys turn. Praise God. I like to look at it in my Bible too. So screens. Mm -hmm. We don't need them screens, do we have? This new generation with all these screens and stuff. <laughs> Praise God. All right. First Corinthians chapter 16. For, uh, I'm sorry, Mark 16, 12. He says, after that he appeared in another form. This is after his resurrection to two of them as they walked and went into the country, 13. And they went and told it to the rest, but they did not believe them either. Later, he appeared to the 11 as they sat at me. And I want you to see this. And he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart. And they're right there after his resurrection. Okay, verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. One more verse. And he who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who believes not will be damned. Now I want you to, I, I want to stop right here because you got you, you to gotta see what's going on. He's already resurrected. Now he's popping up alive, hanging out with them. Appearing unto them in different forms and teaching them about the kingdom. Now with them, the Bible says he upbraided them of their unbelief and hardness of heart. And so even after seeing him alive, after witnessing him being crucified, witnessing the miracles, they still had areas yes. of unbelief wow. and hardness of heart that he had to remove from them. Hmm. Once he completely did that work, he told them to go forth and to tell others Praise God that He has risen. But here's the thing: they already knew that He had He had risen because He was right there before. Mm -hmm. right. They couldn't deny it. But still, they did not know that how they needed to know it, even though He was right before. Them. So He had to remove unbelief and hardness of heart. Wow. Mm -hmm. And my point for saying it is that you say you believe. But there are greater levels of even believing in that which you believe. Yes. Okay. And that was the thing with them. He was before them. But, but their faith was not to the place 
where they were seeing him in the right light mm -hmm. that will produce miracles, signs, and wonders when they went and told the story. Mm -hmm. So the Lord was saying, I got to get everything out of you, all of this fear, mm -hmm. all of these lies, yes. all of this double-mindedness, all of this unsurety out of you before I send you forth, Amen. praise God, to preach the gospel. Amen. Okay? And so what happens is, is that he went on and he said, he who believes and is baptized shall be saved, who that, he that believes not shall be damned, and these signs shall follow them that what? Believe. Well, what are we talking about believing in? That he is truly alive, that he is truly risen, and that he truly has all power. One of the significant points uh, during our time and our stay is when people got the revelation that if I'm in him, I'm in him. And there is no sickness in him. There is no yes. sin in him. There is no oppression in him. There is no darkness. There is no curse in him. There's no broken, brokenness. And if I'm being baptized into him, that means that that stuff has to leave me because I'm leaving my old man behind yes. and I'm coming up as a new creature. Yes. And so those types of understanding, when, when, when that awakened in the heart and people's faith began to expect from God and to expect newness of life, during the baptism, that is what set the tone for the Holy Spirit to administer what each and every person needed. Okay? Amen. But it all points back to properly presenting Jesus and the gospel in a way that helps people understand what's really going on yes. and what they're really doing and what they're really putting their faith in. Yes. Praise God. But uh, so let's go to verse 17, one verse. He went on to say, and these signs will follow those who believe. Mm -hmm. And so when, when those things don't happen, it all points back to how we believe about him. Mm. Okay, It all points back to how we believe about him. Will it happen or will it not happen still points back to a lack of faith in him mm -hmm. and how we perceive him. Yeah. Come out on the wall. Lord, if it be you, bid me come. Yeah. He came, but then he got distracted and he saw it, it all, Jesus grabbed him. Why did you doubt? Okay. Yeah. And so what, what happens is, listen, the greatest revelation that you can have is the revelation of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and who he is. Really seeing that revelation 118 in the right light. Okay. I am he who liveth and was dead and behold, I'm alive evermore. And then he amen himself. And then he said, Amen. I have the keys of death in the hand. Because he did. You go back and read the scripture, he amen himself. Praise God. He's like, I don't care. Y'all know the It's good. Amen. He got the degree with me. He did it. He amen himself. Put it up there. Revelation 118. Praise God. And I just I am he who lived and was dead. And behold, I'm alive forevermore. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and I have the keys of Hades yes. and of death. Praise God. Yeah, praise God. When, when we look at this, you guys, that's not a one-time thing. That is a, a, a daily progressive yielding, mm. stripping of veil, stripping of flesh, stripping of mindsets and perspectives. When the scripture says we go from glory to glory, yes. it's, listen, it's not talking about you really becoming more glorious each and every day. Mm. It's talking about you being stripped daily mm. to see him more clearly as he is. Mm. Removing the foreskins of the flesh that Paul called out. See, sometimes there are layers of darkness. There are layers of, of mindsets. There are layers of things on the inside that must be uprooted out of us. Okay? And so when we talk about from glory to glory, we're talking about seeing Christ. It's not that he's changing. It's not that he's, he's being transformed because he's glorified. Amen. It's just that daily as we grow, a large aspect of growth is the stripping away of ourselves mm. to see him more as he is. The more we empty, the more he fills. The more we die, the more he lives. Praise God. Again, the more we empty, the more he fills. 
the more we die to self, the more he lives in us. Amen. Praise God. And so you will see the glory of God break forth in a direct, proportionate degree of your surrender. Our revelation of Jesus Christ is matching our level of surrender to him. Okay? And as we surrender more and relinquish more, he lives more within us. And his life is made manifest in us and through us. Praise God. And you say, well, I think I'm pretty good, you know. And you, you know, well, I don't know what I'm supposed to look like. I don't know what, well, just look at him. He's the author and the finisher. Yeah. And when I look at Jesus, mm -hmm. and, and, and as much as people say, well, you know, you, you know, you did a great job and, you know, Christ is in you and you're this and you're that and you're that. When I look at him, there's still so much, so, you know, there, there, there's much, there's way more that I want. There's, I want to look like him even more. I had made it. Praise yeah. God. I still see areas that that of, of him that I want. You know, I, I want more of his ways and more of his nature in certain days and more of his character. Amen. Praise God. I'm never done. Praise Amen. God. Amen. I, I got to see him more clearly. Amen. Praise God. And that's my focus. If you can do that, you guys, you will find that the glory of God will break through. Amen. And then when you go forth to minister, you will minister from a place of conviction. Praise God. That comes from experience. Conviction is just another word from faith. Praise God. But you will find the supernatural power of God following you. Praise Amen. God. And, and the operations of God going where you go because it will all be a root of your understanding and of your faith and your revelation of who he is. Praise God. And so that is, a, that is, that is the first point. The second point, uh, again, the reason that the signs, the wonders, and the miracles took place is because Jesus was taught and he was exalted. Amen. And he was a sinner of all things. Whenever you do that and keep in there and you expect the supernatural, you set the platform for God to move, the Holy Spirit always shows up. And it was intentional, if you notice, because before we were going to sit in seats and call each person around. But the reason that God had me shift that is because, number one, it was, a, it was a little limited, would have been a little stifled. And, uh, and it would have killed the expectation. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Everybody needed to be free. Mm -hmm. Everybody needed to be engaged. Everybody needed to be willing. Everybody needed to be open. Praise God. Mm -hmm. And when we began to gather around and put the demand on heaven, and here's the thing, mm -hmm. celebrating, praise God, what God is doing. The Bible said the angels in heaven rejoice over one mm -hmm. sinner that repented. But that celebration was so important. I think uh, someone had, did you, was it your vision that you had a vision of the heavens open? Someone had a vision of the heavens open. You want to share that? Praise God. Would you share it? Oh my gosh, yes. Um, even last night in worship when we were after celebrating Pastor Corey's birthday, when we actually, he said, he said, um, we, I don't know how to end it on. So, um, Unexpectedly, as Corey said, we can we can celebrate me all day, but we it's no celebration without celebrating Jesus Christ. So we went into worship last night, and in worship, it was three veils that had opened, and it was the sun that had literally like shined, and it was like the heavens opened. But even during worship, and on the first day when we were at the meeting greet, it was a heavenly sound that was released, and I believe that that truly set the atmosphere for what had taken place. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Our second point that I want to share deals with the actual, um, well, the actual prophetic ministry. Okay. I want to talk about the prophetic ministry real quick. On that, on that Sunday night, uh, as ministry went for, uh, we all know that it took place for uh, quite some time. There were a lot of people that were spoken to about the sea of grace. And there were other people that uh, just began to be activated in dreams and visions. Uh, Tasha had a very powerful dream that I thought was significant uh, a few days ago when she was given uh, a helmet that allowed her to see praise God into a whole totally different reality uh, that was being given to her as a gift as well. So it's evident that God was opening up things, but as you guys were up there watching, or well, probably, you know, you were watching as Apostle Derek Jackson and I were ministering, praise God. 
you you probably wanted to know what's going on you know how do they do that how does that work you know how does the operation of that actually take place okay because at the end of the day understanding again how it works and how an operation uh, takes place is key to gaining confidence and also experience and also being able to discern uh, what's for you and what's not for you. So I just want to take the time to explain what was going on during that time primarily would mean uh, the ministry was coming from just a sea of grace, you know. Uh, the more you yield uh, and, you know, if you, you scripturally, you find the aspect of a seer first written about in the life of Samuel. Praise God. And just making it real short and brief, it is those who who see revelation that comes from God through the faculty of their eyes, praise God, their spiritual eyes, visual perception, praise God, along that line. Um, and during that time, you guys, uh, I wanted to share something about the end of that. That was significant because we ended up ministering uh, a little longer uh, than anticipated. But what was going on during the operation of the sea of grace is that the Lord was revealing and be given specific insight about people before they came up. Okay. In other words, as I was ministering, um, the Lord will say to me, the next person that comes up, this, 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 and I will see. So I didn't know who the next person was. So all I was doing was listening to what the Lord told me about the next person that would come up, you know, the entire time. The next person that will come up, so, 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 so. Next person that will come up, so, 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 so. Okay. And so that is part of the seer, the seer grace as well. We see that in the life of Samuel. Because after he anointed Saul king, praise God, he told him that he would see a company of prophets. And and they would give him some loaves, and then there were some that would play instruments, and then the Spirit of the Lord would come upon him. Praise God. In other words, with the seer grace, there's oftentimes grace to see ahead of things. Okay? Ahead of what's happening. And God really just lacing you up, telling you. And it was it was a rest for me. You know, because I said, like, okay. Now this is a little different. I don't know if it's because the crowd was stacked over here to the side. And the Lord just said, I got to help my son out. Praise God. And I'm just going to make this easy for you. And just start telling you, uh, you know, and showing you. Before they get there, praise God. But I definitely appreciate it, praise God. It, you know, rather than trying to just lay hands and come up with insight on the moment, I was like, Lord, thank you. Praise God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But I wanted to show it to you in Scripture, praise God. I want you to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1. I mean, 1 Kings 14, verse 1. Praise God. You're going to see it. And this is what technically happened to me at the end. Praise God. Someone asked, well, how is he ministering? Okay. Actually, somebody saw me with my eyes closed. Praise God. I, I made a joke, but I was telling the truth. By the time that, it was about six hours and 30 minutes, the whole room was blurry. Okay, I wasn't seeing anything. I was missing like this. Wait till, wait till you get to the front. I had my eyes closed just talking like this, you know, just trying to connect with the Holy Spirit and stay in tune. And what it was doing, it was helping me see clearer, okay, during that time. You're going to see this, this same concept in the principle of the prophet Abijah. Mm -hmm. It says, at the time Abijah, the son of Jeroboam, became sick. And Jeroboam said to his wife, please arise. And look at what they told him. Disguise yourself that they may not recognize you as the wife of Jeroboam and go to Shiloh. Indeed, Ahijah, the prophet, is there who told me that I would be king over this people. So let me just tell you what's going on. So he's telling her to disguise herself as someone else and to go see the prophet, okay? Because the prophet told me that I would be king over this people. Look at verse 3. It says, also take with you ten loaves, some cakes, a jar of honey, and go to him. And he will tell you what will become of the child. Okay? That's the soft in his heart right there. Hopefully he prophesied with it more. <laughs> Praise God. Verse 4. <coughs> and Jeroboam's wife did so. 
she arose and went to Shiloh and came to the house of Ahijah. I want you to see this. It says, but Ahijah what? Could not, could not see. He couldn't see physically. Okay. And why couldn't he see? For his eyes were glazed. That's about what you saw, you know. That's what you saw on Sunday toward the end. The blurry, glazed eyes that I had. That's what was going on. Praise God. But but Ahijah's eyes, his natural vision abated him because of his age. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, during Sunday, it was just a little natural fatigue. Okay. In the natural. It says, Ahijah could not see, for his eyes were glazed by reason of his age. Let's look at verse half, 5. It says, Now the Lord said to Ahijah, Look, here is the wife of Jeroboam yeah. coming to ask you something about her son, for he is sick. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. He couldn't see physically, but the word of the Lord was coming to him. And God was revealing to him exactly. In other words, the voice of God became his eyes yeah. and his vision. Mm, that's good. Okay? And gave him specific detailed information about who was coming. Who was remember I said so God was telling you who was coming next mm -hmm. and what they were dealing with. Okay. The next person that comes, this, this, this. The next person, this, this, this. And if you listen, it was also seen random at times. We went from uh sometimes demonic principalities to Calculations and math. Yeah. You know, it was all, you know, select to each individual. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He went on to say, here is the wife of Jeroboam. This relationship with the Holy Spirit is still possible today, you guys. Mm -hmm. This is our inheritance. This is how we're called to operate. Not, you know, even when you're physically challenged in some areas, you don't have to be at a disability because his strength is made perfect in our what? In our weaknesses. Here is the wife of Jeroboam coming to ask you something about her son, for he is sick. And thus, thus, and thus, you shall say to her, for it will be when she comes in that she will pretend to be mm -hmm. another woman. Mm -hmm. wow. Isn't that amazing? Wow. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that's hidden from the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. When it comes to the seer grace, this it still operates that way today. Okay. And it's not just limited to people who have that calling. Because everything within the fivefold ministers is the inheritance of every born again believer. Amen. These things are meant to be released, imparted, and reproduced in them that believe. But we have to develop a culture to show scriptural possibilities and to make and, and to bring clarity to the diverse operations and workings of the Holy Spirit. And give people something to hope in, to hunger for, yeah. to expect, to want, to whet their appetite for the greater realities of the kingdom. Praise God. Because, because you know, it's those that hunger and thirst after righteousness yeah. that get filled. Praise God. Amen. And so if we don't teach the deeper things, the greater realities of what's available, then people develop an appetite for the carnal. And for the lower, mm -hmm. and for the shallow, and for those things that do not. But if you show people, if we teach people that that these things are possible for you, that the Holy Spirit can reveal to you, He can speak to you, He can give you detailed insight and information, and show you things to come, then it will awaken that purpose to say, you know what? I think I'm gonna do something different with my time yeah, today. Yeah. You know that 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 show ain't it ain't all that important. Yeah. And that friend I've been talking to, we ain't really talking about yes. that anyway. Yes. Praise God. She ain't talking about that. I'm tired of hearing that. Uh, I want this. Amen. Praise God. So I'm going to yes. get into scriptures. I'm going to read some books. I'm going to fast and pray. Yes. I'm going to meditate. I'm going to let my, I'm going to hang around people and meet up and press into the presence yes. because I want this. Yes. Praise God. Amen. And so that's what we've got to begin to uh, to really do and to explain. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10, you guys, real quick. And uh, I'll shoot uh, to this last point and then we're out of here. First Corinthians 12, 10. It says, therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities and in persecutions, uh, reproaches and needs and in distresses 
for Christ's sake, for when I am weak and am I strong. This, this, this has to be your stance when it comes to everything that has to do with the will of God. You have to see that weakness is not a bad place to be when it comes to your physical strength and ability. Okay? Because what it does, it sets you up for God dependency. It sets you up for all things are possible to them that believe. If you're never, listen, if you're never put in a position to where you need impossibilities to be possible in your situation, yes. what is faith for? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. If everything could be accomplished in our own strength, and if we if, and, and if and if we could do things, praise God, without having to pull from his strength to accomplish them, then he's not necessary. Mm -hmm. Now, scripturally, the Bible is clear that he is our sufficiency. Praise God. And so we shouldn't freak out when things seem beyond us. Listen, the only reason that you become overwhelmed is because you try to push the mountain or climb over the mountain instead of speaking to the mountain. In other words, it becomes too much when you try to do God things and God missions and God wills in your own strength and ability. You got to learn how to yield, how to partner. And how to surrender, mm -hmm. praise God, to the greater one who's on the inside. Mm -hmm. And what happens is, when there is human weakness, he brings divine strength, aid, and assistance. That's what was going on. I, didn't have, I don't have the ability in me to minister seven hours prophetic. I don't, you know. I was depending and pulling each and every moment from the strength of God and from the strength of the Holy Spirit. So much so that it, I didn't even know it was that long. You know, it didn't even feel like it during that time. Wow. Praise God. But that's not that's not humanly possible because for me, I only got three hours of sleep the night before and the night before that. Praise God. And so it didn't make sense to have that kind of strength and energy. Mm -hmm. Praise God. But I knew where to keep my heart. Mm -hmm. I knew where to keep my confidence. I knew to stay humble. I knew to keep pulling, to stay dependent. I, and, and I knew that I had to do that. And as long as I did that, then whatever strength I needed, heaven would bring. Amen. Praise God. And that is the key. Praise God. I didn't allow a weak place to freak me out. Praise God. Or to cause me to try to do things in my own strength. And that is the thing. Praise God. Paul said to, in the book of Acts, he said, Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in your weakness. Praise God. Stop being ashamed of your weaknesses and of your limitations. And stop trying to bring more strength. You, we try to exert more strength out of me. More strength out of me. But no, just, just release your faith. Connect with him. God strengthened me. God empowered me. God filled me. Praise God. God, God rides in me. Praise God. God strengthen me in this area, God. Lord, empower me. Give me the grace. Give me the anointing. Give me the words, God. Give me the wisdom. Give me the ability, God. Give me everything I need at this moment, God, to be successful and to be more than a conqueror. Praise God during this moment. Praise God. I wanted to share that. That is a key as well. Praise God. When you feel like you're not, he is. Always remember. When you feel like you're not, he is. Last point, praise God. We're going to deal with Michelle's prophecy. This is an operation of the Spirit as well. Now, this is important because this deals with Zion as a whole, the ministry of deliverance, but also, I believe, uh, the culture that God is raising up as it relates to dreaded champions here, praise God, in Zion. Dreaded champions is not just a, a cute catchphrase. It was actually a revelation that I received in a dream at the Cater Work release, and God was telling me, he said, you're going to raise up dreaded champions. Uh, I didn't, you know, and then he began to show me a visual of who the dreaded champions were, the spirit, the nature, the character, the anointing that they would carry, their focus, that they would be fearless, they would storm the gates of hell, they would tear down darkness, they, 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 they were not defensive, they were offensive, they were like David's mighty man, praise God, who went in war in Second Chronicles, praise God. And so he said, you will raise up dreaded champions. I've never heard of that term and heard of that name. Yeah. There are a lot of prophecies that come forth about messengers of power, nameless, faceless ones, and, 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 and Joel's army. So there are a lot of prophetic, but God said that as it relates to me, that I'm responsible for helping to raise up dreaded champions, praise God, in his son. And so I went and found the scripture, praise God, 
Uh, I did research and went and got Bibles and concordances and translators and said, God, help me understand this, this dreaded champion thing. And what I found was Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 11. Praise God. Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 11. This is where the foundation of that comes from. Praise God. Do you have the NASB? Praise God. If not, I will read it. I will read it. I will read it. If you have the NASB translation, it will be great. Praise God. Okay. NASB says, but the Lord is with me as a dread champion. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble and not prevail. They will utterly be ashamed because they have failed with an everlasting disgrace. It will not be forgotten. What was significant on that last night is that her prophecy uh, dealt with that and dealt with the storming uh, of the gates of hell and the storming of the power, uh, uh, tearing down the power of darkness, uh, demonic principalities. And I do not believe that it was limited to her, but I do believe that that night was significant as a forerunner and God was showing Zion what he wanted them to do and Zion, who he wanted Zion to be. Uh, not as it mean. We heard that the graduation was twofold. It was a natural graduation as well as a spiritual promotion as well. Praise God. And I believe that you guys are beginning to walk in that. I see a newness of life everywhere. Praise God in everyone. Uh, new grace, new strength, new elegance, new, you know, new, new, new operations of God. Praise God. New confidence, yeah. a wholeness, a greater wholeness and consistency. Praise God when it comes to life. But what began to happen when it came to her being ministered to, uh, there were prophecies and there was a word given uh, about, uh, about demonic warfare and being able to prevail against it and being graced by God to subdue it and to conquer it. Okay? Well, I'm going to share briefly what's happened. And this, is, this, is, this operation of the Spirit is very, very, uh, very important because it, it takes the limitations off. So, you know, when they went back, and I'm, I used a lot of discretion, but there was a particular person that began to struggle and they began to fight and they were going through some demonic oppression and they asked for help in a room at about uh, 2.30 in the room that she was in. And uh, uniquely, uh, Michelle and two of the other uh, graduates began to gather together to minister to her, you know, and as she was leading the way, praise God, they were helping. And this is what was significant, because we're still talking about operation. One of the other young ladies were praying, and another one was receiving specific insight through visions about the spirits that were there. And she could see when they would leave. And so you had one person ministering deliverance, another praying, and then one, her gifts began to operate as she positioned her heart to help with deliverance. And she had a visual of everything that was transpiring in the spirit, okay? Mm -hmm. So you had hands, and then you had eyes yeah. over here. And then you had covering and support through this intercession. And that is, that is a picture of what Zion is supposed to look like when it comes to flowing together, mm -hmm. when it comes to operating in the supernatural, when it comes to moving in the things of God. And here's the thing. It was a new beginning in the aspect of where it is something that neither of them had ever done before. Wow. So you know that this was the spirit of the Lord raising them up, preparing them yes. for this, okay, mm -hmm. along this line. But as they moved forth and began to move uh, in the area of the supernatural and minister deliverance, I even talked to the person myself and, you know, just kind of gave me a little insight. It showed you this. God is so serious about you guys being equipped. Okay? Because he allowed it to happen at a time when I was not around physically. You know, and the reason that God did that is because he's saying it's time. It's time. You know enough. You know, you've been taught enough. But at some point, you got to do it. Yes. At some point, you got to stretch forth in your hand and say, be healed. Yes. At some point, you got to prophesy. At some point, you got to say, come out in the name of Jesus. You got to do something Amen. with what you've learned. Praise God. And God was saying in that graduation that this is the time to show you that there is more in you. You are more equipped and capable. It is your time to arise as dreaded champions to move forward in the purpose of God, in the kingdom of God. So many people say, well, I don't know enough. I ain't been taught yeah. enough. I ain't been done enough. I ain't enough. There's so many excuses that we hide up under for years. So many rocks, yeah. you know, so many yeah. rocks that we hide up under for years. 
But what God will do to get you from up under the rock is the same thing he did for me. He will place somebody before you that you care about a lot. Praise God. And, and when you see them in oppression, it's like your child. If you see your child in danger, no matter what they in or what's going on, you're going to get there. You're going to try to do whatever is necessary. If you're weak, you're going to get bold. If you're sleepy, you're going to wake up. Praise God. If you know, It doesn't matter who's in the way. If they're a teacher, principal, president, or whoever, you let your baby be in danger, you're going to rise up and you're going to be there. Praise God. Kiana, can you tell you, how many parents you had showed up at school praise God, over some stuff? Praise God. I see it all over Facebook. I'm going up to that school, praise God, messing with my baby, bullying my baby, praise God. You you let some things go on, praise God. Then they will break they will they will make you do things. Praise God. They will bring you out of your comfort zone and make you move and do things that, that previously you will not do. And that is why love is so important. And so what we had, we had a dear sister in Christ that was hurting that said, Help me. I need help. Okay. And so and so at that point, forget about what I hadn't been taught. You know, forget about what I hadn't learned. Mm -hmm. There's no time to be afraid. My sister is hurting. Amen. She's in distress. Mm -hmm. yeah. I have to do something. Okay. I have to do something. Okay. Love will tell you. That you got to, you, listen, the love of Christ will tell you that you can do everything but nothing. Mm -hmm. Love won't let you sit still. Come on. Won't let you just sit still. Mm -hmm. It won't let you say, oh, well. Won't let you say, I don't know, or I'm not equipped. No, when the pain is deep enough, when the cry, when the agony, when the hurt is deep enough, and you got the love of God in you, you're going to rise up to the plate in ways that you've never risen up before. Praise God. Because of what's at stake and because of what's on the other side. And that's what God was showing. The prevailing and the provoking of the love. Okay? Uh, operations. So they're in there. And casting out demons. Casting out devils. At 2 or 3 in the morning. Actually, it's about 3 30 a.m. When others were sound asleep, the graduates were in full-blown deliverance. This alliance had been formed. You're seeing visions. You're covering. You're commanding. Because our sisters are there. Here's the thing. No cause is too great. Do you see what God did? He didn't care that they were sleeping. He didn't care. What he was saying is that her being free is more important than you getting some sleep. Yes. And this is how, look, if we're going to be effective, this is how we have to do Christianity. Because we have these limitations. Yes. We have these, these I won't. We, we, sometimes we allow our flesh to just run us and control us. And when people are in danger, we're not even, we don't even show up. And God was proving during that, that, that time is that her being free was more important than any of y'all getting some sleep. Yeah, because she did not need to go back to that state bow. Praise God. God. And so it showed the love of God. In the love of the Father and what he prioritizes, what he emphasizes, and what he values more than anything. And that's him loving his children and helping his children who are in need. Okay? Praise God. And I, I, I made sure that I wanted to communicate. But my last point is this right here. When she was, um, as they were ministering, because this is part of the equipping, um, as, as they were ministering freedom and deliverance, um, there were a couple people, matter of fact, that heard me in the room, mm -hmm. okay, commanding and, and helping in the deliverance, okay. Uh, matter of fact, those two, now she woke up and heard it, praise God, she heard it, and they could hear my voice saying, in the name of Jesus, mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus, and when you do when you've only done that for the first time and you hear the voice or you have the support of your overseer partnering with you it helps mm -hmm. praise god it helps with the ministry it helps with the company but here's a supernatural thing i was physically in the room sleeping mm -hmm. and was not even in the room physically yeah. okay and so it was the holy spirit who took my spirit mm -hmm. To help 
Cover them, not do it for them, because it's their time. Yes. They're the dreaded check. Yes. But to cover and to assist as they move forth in the power of God to do what God had placed in them before the foundation of the world. You can't make this stuff. Amen. Praise God. Now, here's the other side of the story. So when I talked to the person that was delivered, she said, she said that when she was going through it in dark, and, and, and it was going through it, that the spirit was attacking her, but she kept saying, Lord, I want my dad. Lord, I want my dad. I'm a spiritual father. And she cried out, Dad, I need help. Okay? That is how God took my spirit over there to assist and to help. Okay? There's only one other time that that's happened, and that was with uh, Debbie, who was dying and out in wow. Hazel Green. And she looked up to heaven and she said, God, if Corey is real, if he's really a man of God, tell him I need help, I need prayer. And she was kind of rolling on the floor, out in the trailer, had lost service. And she said that she screamed my name and she said, Corey, I need help, help me. Well, I was asleep in prison and came out of my body and traveled there. And I saw her physically for the first time. And I, I, I saw her on the floor and I picked her up and put her on the bed and began to pray for healing over her. But as I prayed for healing, a demon reached his hand through her and pushed my hand off of her. And at that point, I began to command the spirits to come out of her. And when I commanded them to come out, an angel would pull the demon out of her and throw it out the window. I command another one to come out. An angel would grab it and throw it out. And it was a download of so much revelation about what she was thinking, what she went through, her heart, everything. It was just a download of revelation. And when the experience ended, because I knew it was literal, I immediately called Rhonda, called her sister. And I said, this happened to Debbie. Tell her this, 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 and this, and don't go back to this, because God has set her free from this. Mm -hmm. And uh, and upon that, that's exactly what happened. But there was more detail that I shared that she had not even told her family. And it was impactful enough for her to get her life on to the Lord, because she was considered a black sheep. She got, got born again. She gave her testimony and shared it and all of it. But that was the only time that, that, that someone has called for me and God took me there. Mm -hmm. you know? And it's the same thing that happened in this situation as well. I shared that to really explain operations of the mm -hmm. Spirit. Mm -hmm. What's possible when we believe and, and, and how God works and how God moves. Yeah. Praise God. Do you not know that there's coming a time where you're not going to have to, you, 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 I'll put it like this in closing, you're, you, you, can't, you can't limit God. Philip was translated to Azotus after he completed the work of the Lord. There's so many things that God is doing in and through our midst, you know. In the book, When Heaven and Earth Collide, I make this statement. God can trust you to be free in the spirit to the degree that you are willing to love. He can trust you with powers, giftings, abilities, you know, limitations being removed to the degree that he can trust us to do the right thing with it. Okay. Somebody, some of y'all had this gift of spiritual travel. You'd be on vacation. <laughs> You'd be all over in Paris. <laughs> all over there on the pyramids of Egypt. So I'd always want to be here. <laughs> you just, <laughs> you just <laughs> God's got to make sure we have the heart Amen. to do the right thing with what He's given us. Okay? So again. Thank you for your time. I just wanted to hit diversity of operations, uh, miracle signs and wonders, Christ Center, praise God. Um, the sea of grace, praise God, happens and, and you'll begin to see and receive revelation like that. His strength is made perfect in your weakness. 
Believe in the Holy Spirit to show you things to come. He will. He will. He will. And when it comes to deliverance and casting out demons, moving in the Spirit, realize that there is no sacrifice that's too great. And I, I believe that those things are going to begin to happen in a lot of us. Just going to ask that you stand as we close out in prayer. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Father, we thank you for this time and this moment in your presence, God. And we thank you for what you did this weekend, God. We thank you for the operations of your spirit, God. One of the things that you shared with us today, God, was the importance of being open, God, to realize that there's always more to understand, to see. I want to pray right now, Father, that, Father, whatever area you have stirred in the hearts of your people, in the area of hunger, expectation, God, thirst, possibilities, God, some are saying, I see how this goes. I understand how it goes. I want to pray right now, Father, that you would pour in wisdom, knowledge, revelation, and understanding. Father, I just ask, God, that in all of these three areas, wonders, miracles, and signs, I just decree, Father, that your children will rise. I thank you that the activity of heaven will follow them. I thank you that as they preach and teach your word, as you said in Mark 16, that the Lord work with them, confirming the word with signs following I thank you for the confirming of your word, God, amongst your children, God. The spontaneous move, breakthrough and break out of heaven, God, in a way that no man gets the glory, God. But no man, Father, God, can, 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 your, your word says no flesh can glory in your presence anyway. Paul said that I determined to know nothing among them except Jesus Christ and them crucified. And I was with you in weakness and fear and in much trembling. That your faith would not stand in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. We thank you, Father, for the purity of the gospel, of the resurrected Christ, God. We thank you that as we believe, as we preach, as we decree, and as we move in faith and obedience, that he will stretch forth his hand to heal, set free, and deliver, God, as he has done, God, and has never stopped doing. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for your working and for your ministry, God. Father, I also pray for those who were hungry about the revelation. They were listening to the story of Ahias, and they say, Lord, I want that type of relationship. I want God to speak to me and to tell me about things and about people and about what's to come and to let me know what truly is, God. But I just ask for that degree of friendship to be extended in Jesus' name. Father, that you would be a revealer of secrets to your people, God. Let this see your grace and this see your anointing, God, increase in your people, God. That many people may be helped and be ministered to, God. Because as his wife was sick, God, and as he was sick, God, in Jesus' name, there are many people today who are sick who need a word from you, God. They need help and they need ministry, God. I say, Father, make it happen. Open the eyes of your people, God. Father, we are a visual people. You've given us dreams and visions, God. Father, for our day and for our generation. God. So let this grace increase, God. And also, Father God, raise up your dreaded champions, God, in Jesus' name. We thank you for teaching and equipping in the area of deliverance, God. We thank you for team ministry, God. You're merging gifts, God. Bring the gifts together, God, so that, Father, men and women and children of God will flow together, God, in the supernatural to set man free in Jesus' name. Show us the importance of each other, God, and how we seek, God, and how you bring in, God, how one can chase the thousand, God, but two can chase ten thousand, God. And three, God, it only multiplies, God. A million, God, in Jesus' name. And so, Father, we thank you, Father, for the harmonization of gifts and calling, God, in Jesus' name. I just pray, Father, that you will continue to build the confidence of your dreaded champions, God, that they will move forth in areas of power and deliverance, God. We thank you, Father, according to your word, Father, that souls will be saved and captives will be set free. We give you praise, honor, and glory for these things. In Jesus' name, we thank you and pray. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Well, that concludes, family, our Sunday, Sunday. Praise God. Sunday encounter. We thank you guys for joining us. God bless you guys. Remember, November uh, 3rd, foundational class will start. So you guys be prepared. We love you. And y'all have an awesome, awesome remainder of the day. Praise God. In Jesus' name.